Good morning, everybody. We are going to be um, nature journaling this morning from my apartment. Oh, -ho. <laughs> I thought it might be kind of nice to, I don't know, since everybody's pretty much stuck at home and um, maybe you don't have access to nature in your backyard or, you know, certainly at my place, I only have a balcony and I maybe have some house plants, but, you know, that's not quite the same. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do um, some nature journaling where we can just stay inside and get connected to nature. Um, now, my plan today, by the way, this is Rachel. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I'm going to refresh my Facebook feed over here so I can find the video and, uh, you know, answer everybody <laughs> when, when they're talking to me and stuff. Let me turn the volume down. Cool. Um, so we're going to be looking at making a field guide, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, and this is just an activity that means like we're going to be taking a group of animals, plants, whatever. In this case today, I thought we would take a look at our pocket guide of Kansas freshwater mussels and get to know the some of the animals in this group by um, journaling them and making notes about them from this pocket guide. So if you don't have a copy of your pocket guide to Kansas mussels, um, you can actually find a free PDF of this on our website, gpnz.org. So go download that PDF or, you know, just Google the, the muscles that we're going to talk about and find some photos of them to journal. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So I'm pretty excited. I'm going to start off like always by taking my journal page here and writing my intentions down on it. So, um, today we're journaling muscles and I'm going to mix it up a little bit and actually use like ink and gasp a pencil today. I've got a red pencil cause I kind of like when I, um, if I end up coloring in some of these things and I know muscles aren't like the most colorful animal out there in the world, but like the reason I picked these guys is because I don't really know very much about them. And so I'm excited to learn about them. Anyway, um, I like using a red pencil cause it makes it, I don't know, somehow a little easier to ignore it when I put inks on it or whatever. So we're going to do, um, a field guide and I'm going to actually make some block letters here just for fun. That, that looks uh, like a word. Okay. Field guide to muscles. And I've actually already gone ahead in my um, pocket guide here. And I uh, picked out some muscles that I wanted to journal. Just because they were like common throughout the state. Like let me see if I can find. Um, I put little tabs on them so I could find them again like okay this one maybe not the most common ever but you can see it's found like pretty much across like this whole um region and it had some really interesting features like these like warty ridges and stuff um but a lot of the other ones I picked were just like things that I might encounter because they were so common in the state uh so yeah we'll we'll look at those and see what we're doing so anyway um muscles Kansas muscles. And for this like activity today, I'm just going to pick like those four, I think is what I picked out four or five. Um, if you guys are going to be doing this at home too, one thing that might be kind of fun is, um, adding to it or making multiple pages. My goal today is just to fill this one page with my four muscles and some like comparisons, if I find any interesting information in my guide, I'm going to write that in. So if you're new to nature journaling, let me remind you that our main goal is to basically like, okay, I read something this morning that was like talking about mindfulness in the context of nature journaling. And I thought that was a pretty good description. So we're just like sitting down, getting really close to nature and um, learning about it. And there's something really cool about like the action of taking the time to write things down and even sketch things out like little diagrams or whatever um, that really makes this a, a great learning opportunity. I don't know. It's kind of taking me back to um, my undergrad days when I would literally uh, make index cards of all the groups of animals and just like sketch them out to try and remember what the heck they looked like. So, um, that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to write my date in here. What day, what day is it even? 
it's Tuesday, right? Okay, so it's the 31st. Um, March 31st. If you're just joining me, hey, I'm Rachel. What's up? Nice to see you. Um, well, well, uh, week two of oh, three, I guess, for me, technically, three of isolation. Yay. Welcome to my apartment. Smiley face. Okay, cool. So let's look at some muscles. Um, I'm trying to, this, this activity today again is, um, making like a miniature field guide. So really our goal is number one to like learn the characteristics of like three to four different things that fit within this group. Um, if you want to do this at home, you can go out into your yard and look at like different flowers that might be coming out like dandelions. I've noticed a ton of dandelions and hen bit out leaves, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, we're going to learn about muscles today. So I have these four picked out. I think what I'm going to do is kind of loosely like break up my page so that there's four different sections for the muscles to have. Um, and this is such a weird group of animals that like end up having to put in some information that I learn about like what these animals even are and what they do and what their anatomy is. Yeah, what day is it? Super quarantine mood, Anna. <laughs> Golly. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm also going to go ahead and I think just write in what these different muscles are. That way, those of you who are kind of like following along and trying to do this with me, maybe you'll, you'll be able to see what it is and um, Google some pictures for yourself. So I'm just gonna go in chronological order here in the book. We've got our three ridge. Muscles have like really funny names. I almost honestly wanted to do a couple of them just because of their names, but then they weren't like common, like the warty back. <laughs> um, there's a floater in here too, which just makes me think of like poo. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna write the scientific name in here too, just for funsies. Uh, Amblema. And I'm not sure, I guess I'm doing this because I'm not sure in muscles if the common names are really well like um, uniform across, you know, the nation or the internet. And there's a lot of groups of organisms where, you know, you might call it something in Kansas, but people call it more commonly something totally different in a different part of this country. So yellow sand shell. I like this one a lot. I think I honestly picked it because it has like all these river systems, but then I was reading the description and it said, um, because of its color and shape, some of the old shellers would refer to it as the banana boat, and that just made me giggle, so I picked it. Um, sand shell. Like, I didn't even know we had this many muscles in Kansas, and I work for the place that published this book, so, oops. <laughs> Lamp Silas. Terry's. And I know some of us that have done Nature Journal Club in person at the Nature Center, um, we have done some muscle sketching in the past because I we've got a bunch of like muscle specimens all over the place pond muscle very creative name um let's see and I guess this one just reminded me a lot of muscles that I see outside and it's really really common so um I guess I thought that would be a good one to pick legumia Sub subrostrata, okay. Now for anybody who um, was asking before about being able to find these afterwards, I have been downloading the live streams once they finish and uh, uploading them to our YouTube channel. So there's a playlist now on our YouTube channel for the nature journaling courses if you wanna go back and, and watch some of them later on when you're able to sit down and actually do some activities. Also, there's some really good resources that are available for free right now. Um, one of them is even called teaching nature journaling. So if I've got any of my fellow interpreters who are interested in trying out something like this at your site, um, download that free book from John Moore Laws. It's a really, really good resource and um, they're offering it as a, a free download right now. So that's pretty cool. Um, pink paper shell. This one's kind of cute. Also, it kind of just reminded me of something I've seen before. So I figured that would be a useful one to journal. Potamilus ohiensis must be common in Ohio. Boop. 
and I am underlining those scientific names because I'm neurotic and that is the proper way to write out scientific names because um, you can't italicize if you're looking at just like a piece of paper and you're writing it down. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's my bad. For some reason, my phone thought that I had uh, summoned Google to do things for me and it paused my stream. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to get the general outline of these guys down. So starting with my most unusual one, and this is kind of weird too about muscles. Like you can see in this picture, they've got like different sizes of the muscle and they've got some characteristics in common, but I'm a little skeptical of my ability to like sketch out maybe a shape like this and then be able to actually recognize it when I go out there. So I'm going to have to pay attention to the comments of this guide to figure out like which features on this muscle are the most important features. But anyway, for now, I'm just going to come down here and I wonder if I can like zoom it in a little bit. That's maybe not the best thing ever, but oh well. Um, and let's sketch him out. So I'm looking at my book here and uh, let's see. I know the glare is terrible, sorry guys. I want to, I've got like the little, I think this is called the hinge on a muscle. I am completely relying on my conversations with former director Jim Mason that I've had about muscles here, um, which I'm ashamed to admit I did not pay as much attention to as I should have. So now here I am um, trying to learn from scratch basically, but that's okay. So this is the hinge and you can kind of see that like on this muscle, um, all these ridges are kind of going around that hinge like that. So I'm going to try and make sure when I'm, um, I, get, I guess, like putting this out there that I'm really paying attention to where those shapes are. So I'm going to just kind of loosely sketch in like the basic direction of where those shapes are coming from. And it's kind of cool. Like I'm noticing it almost like folds in on itself and it's really, really 3D. So I'm going to try and capture that right there. Um, and then it just kind of follows that outline around. Okay, so then we've got really like distinct like scalloped edges here so I'm gonna make sure I get some of those in and for me like I don't really mind as much if it's not a hundred percent precise because I think for me I'm just trying to capture like the general shapes of this muscle shell which you know, obviously there's a lot of variation anyway, so I think that's that's the most important thing. Don't get bogged down in the details about whether it looks like perfect or whatever, because that's the opposite intention of nature journaling. It's just to make your own documentation and observations. Well, okay, there's uh, something. It's an outline. Um, and I think... Let's see, I, I want to make sure I get these ridges, since it's literally called the three ridge, I'm guessing that those ridges are pretty important. Um, so, yeah, it says this thick shelled muscle gets its name from the three prominent ridges, which can sometimes be two or four. Okay, good, because I was looking at this picture, and it kind of looks like there's one, two, three, like maybe four of those ridges. So, um, that's good to know. It doesn't have to be three. So I guess, how am I going to capture this? Um, since it's kind of a 3D shape, I guess what I'm going to do is kind of like scribble in maybe where the top of these ridges look like they're coming in. And that's just how I'm going to choose to do this. So as you are filling out your journal, um, you choose to do it whatever way makes the most sense to you. And I'm actually noticing now that this ridge right here kind of forks off a little bit. So I'm going to, I guess, I guess do that with this one. Cool. Um, I like sometimes when, when like shapes are weird, finding a different way to try and draw them. Like instead of doing an outline, like doing scribbles and zigzags and stuff can be really helpful. Even on things like legs on animals, if you just kind of scribble in the shape, it kind of takes your mind out of the typical drawing scenario that you put yourself into and, uh, helps you to see different things. So yeah, there we go. Um, that's my three ridge and... I guess I'm also going to maybe sketch in some of the lines here. Like, these don't really look like ridges so much, but they definitely look 3D, kind of, you know what I mean? So I am going to try and sketch in around these shapes just to kind of get, yeah, the feel for that thing. So since I've sketched out the basics here, I am going to go ahead and take a couple of important notes or notes that I think are important 
And just for the fun of it, I might use a different, like, like a marker or something. I've got these fun little Tombow markers that have double tips on them um, that I got as a gift, and they're really fun. So I'm going to write over here that it can have two to four ridges, since that's something important that I've noticed. And the name makes it a little misleading, so I wanted to make sure that I understood when I come back and look at this in the future that it has a variable amount of ridges. Cool. Okay. Um, coffee break. <laughs> and I guess... Hmm. Since that was um, a pretty quick outline, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do the next outlines on these muscles. So let me scoot my little sketchbook over here, my journal page. Um, again, if you're just joining us, we were doing um, a field guide page today. So this activity works for literally anything, and I thought it'd be fun to do it at my home since a lot of us are stuck at home and we don't have access to, like, all of the stuff out at the nature center. Um, this is something you can do at home. So download a free pocket guide off our website or grab yours off your shelf if you have it and follow along. So let me see. Um, let's do yellow sand shell. Ah, there it is which has a really fun shape. I love this guy. Okay. Um, and this is a, a little bit more of a simple shape and uh, there's so much variation in it, but, um, I'm going to read the description real quick and see which of these like features on it are the most prominent. The last one was easy because it's in the name, but let's see what the most prominent features are. Let's see. Okay. A long and rather narrow muscle. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing they mean like narrow in this direction and then long in this direction. And remember how we talked about the hinge on this guy? So actually, why don't I label the hinge on this old one? Boom, a hinge. So the hinge on this one is like up at the top here. Okay, important. Oh, interesting. It, uh is called the bank creeper because it tends to crawl around. That's really cool. And uh, you attempted to draw a banana boat. That nice, yeah, that's great. Um, perfect. <laughs> it says it's actually sexually dimorphic, which means that the males and the females look different. I wonder if these are the male and female then. Oh, and the female has a man. Ooh, fun. Okay, the female is slightly more bulged in appearance. Maybe that is the female and that's the male. Ooh, that's really fun. Okay, so before we even draw, I'm gonna write that down. Um, so the, the term for this is uh, sexually dimorphic. And that just means that the different sexes, the boys and the girls, the males and the females, have different physical characteristics. So you can tell them apart. Kind of like how in cardinals, the males are bright red and the females are more brown with like orange beaks. So that's what we're talking about here with these guys. Cool. Okay, well, it sounds like the most important thing um, is the shell <laughs> color being kind of yellow, um, and the, like, narrowness of, of this, um, elongated shell. So I guess we'll just sketch them in, I'm trying to hold this in a way so you guys can actually see the picture in case you're journaling along with me. Um, and you know what? I think I'm gonna draw the female quite large, or sorry, the male, I guess. Which one is... The, the female's more bulgy. I wish it told me on this picture which one the male and the female was, um... But that's okay. So I'm going to draw this, like, long skinny one because it looks more like a banana boat. <laughs> and that's what somebody described it as in this description. So um, here's the little hinge. Boom, boom, boom. Important. Okay. And then it kind of curves around like this and makes almost a little bit of a point over here. And while I'm journaling, I am, since I, like, divided up the space nice and... Uh, well, <laughs> before I started, I'm trying to make sure I leave myself space for words. Um, I'm going to grab an eraser real quick. See, this is why I don't do pencils normally. I hate that I just want to erase everything and do it better. But it's okay. We're going to get away from using pencils ASAP. Um, you can do you. <laughs> you do whatever you want. But that's just my personal preference when I'm journaling. Um, okay, so there's, there's a muscle. Um, and just like on the last one, I want to make sure I capture which direction these little, um, ridges are going. And actually, I, I wish I knew what the proper name for those things are. They're kind of like tree rings, right? They're maybe growth rings would be a proper word for this, but you see how, um, the rings like really fold in and that kind of gives it that three dimensional shape where you can tell that this part here is 
a bit like protruding compared to the rest of it. So I want to really make sure I get that like fold in of the ridges going under and tucking under. So this ridge right here was quite prominent. Nice. And you can kind of see, like I'm going to sketch this in actually loosely so I know that it's like a contour thing and not like an actual mark. But you can see like it kind of sticks out and like almost so hits this point and then boom, it turns kind of like the tip of the shell there. And probably, again, I don't know a whole lot about muscles, but I'm assuming that because these are growth rings, um, at one time, this must have been what the actual muscle looked like. And I'm noticing that I definitely made it a little bit too elongated compared to the uh, image, but that's okay because there's a lot of variation in muscles. And I think I am at the very least kind of capturing the general shape of it. So again, like y'all don't get bogged down by the details if you're like me and that tends to be a problem <laughs> and gets in the way of you actually journaling. So there we go. Tucking those little sh things in there. Plications? What? Parallel ridges or folds on the outer shirt. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Ooh, that's a fun word. I'm going to take your word for it, Anna, and assume that your Googling is correct. And I'm going to write plications with a question mark on my journal and point to those little ridges. That's a fun word. I love learning new words. Oh, okay. That made my morning. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, cool, cool, cool. So there's our muscle shell. Boom, boom, boom. We've got again, more of this like contouring dude over here. And I'm just going to like loosely sketch in a couple of more of these lines just to kind of show that like, hey, the plications are totally on the shell in these other places too. They're just not maybe as prominent. So that's okay. Cool. So that's our yellow sand shell. Um, since we're trying to write down some features as we go, I am going to write down that this guy um, is a pale yellow color. And since I'm using not ballpoint pens today and these uh, things I am using are not water soluble, um, this is something that, at least for me, I could totally go back and add some colors easy with like watercolors or something. I, watercolors is my thing of choice, but you guys could use crayons or um, colored pencils and really anything else cool. Should I do the other one too up here? I don't know for a fact that it's um, like the other sex, but... Um, well, maybe maybe I'll hold off on drawing the other one. Maybe I'll do like a loose sketch and uh, write in my question since I do have a question about which sex this one is or whether it is. And um, I am not going to take the time to like Google things out right now. So that's one thing that's kind of nice about journaling is that you can document your questions and then it gives you an opportunity to go back later and attempt to answer them. So we'll add her little ridge right here. Boom, 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 boom. With a female question mark on it. And maybe if I just happen to get somebody like Jim Mason who pops up in my chat, ooh, maybe he'll be able to answer that for us, but that's okay. We'll do that for now and say female question mark. Um, and since I'll, I had the sexually dimorphic note up here, I will go ahead and make a little arrow that says... Um, where is the word? Um, female is more bulged in appearance. And I'm going to put quotes in there since it's, you know, an actual quote from my little field guide here. Cool. Okay. So there's our yellow sand shell. Um, I'm going to move on now and ooh, uh, maybe we'll like zoom out a bit. Okay. So there's our uh, lovely little muscle page. Okay, cool. So thanks, Anna. The um, posterior end of the shell is pointed in males. So yeah, that means this one is the, the male. And since I know that for a fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that in like actual pen. So that's um, pointed posterior. Nice. Thanks, Anna. You're killing it out here for me. Um, and then this is the female which we said was more bulge in appearance. That's so cool. I didn't even think about sexual dimorphism being an issue in these guys. But these guys meaning muscles generally. Cool. 
That's cool. Um, okay, coffee break. Boop boop. <laughs> oh, my coffee's gone cold. Rip. Well, anyway, there's our paper, or, uh, yellow sand shell. So now we're going to go on to our next one. I think the pond mussel is going to be our next one. And for those of you just joining, we're making like a little field guide to, to creatures that we might see around us. I um, guess I'm going to move my little sketchbook up here like this. And, uh, this is something you can do at home along with me because I'm streaming from my apartment today. Hey, <laughs> um, to put myself in y'all's shoes where we're just working with whatever nature we can get around us. And in this case, we're using our beautiful pocket guides. So let's see, I'm going to be horrible and bend my book over. Don't, um, destroy me in the comments there. So here's our pond muscle, which I picked because it's really widespread and it like just looked like a muscle I've seen before. No idea. Um, <laughs> but let's see. Oh, what's Doug say? Took an invertebrate uh, paleon oh, paleontology class in college. That's fun. Wrote a paper that included sketches of Kansas fossil muscles. Oh, yes. Species and geologic age. Yeah, that's so fun. Um, I... I maybe uh, shouldn't call fossils Kansas seashells, but oh, I guess I, I, that's fine because they are literally seashells. I was just thinking like we have actual like seashells in Kansas, but these aren't, these are freshwater. So heck, we can call Kansas fossils uh, Kansas seashells, but um, that's a really fun thing to do too. Uh, you can go out to any rock cuts here in the state and you can really find some interesting, oh geez, I just broke my pencil. I use too much pressure. Um, but yeah, you can find some really cool fossilized uh, bivalves and brachiopods. Those are like, um, you know, shells like these guys, basically. Um, clam type shells, um, symmetrical little dudes where it's like each half looks identical. Those are brachiopods. But it's a fun activity and uh, I love journaling. Actually, I think I have some like right over there on my cabinet because. I go out fossiling all the time. Fossiling? Is that a word? I don't know. Um, and I collect these guys. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, these are fun. Okay, so here's a couple that I found um, just like maybe 40 minutes outside of Wichita. So this is a brachiopod, um, and so is this right here. So that's cool. These are really, really fun to journal. We've totally done some fossil journaling before. This is a really nice looking one. Look at that. It's so pretty. I love these guys. And then you can see the hinge on the back here on this, which is really cool. So that's where those two halves of the shell meet. And again, this is a brachiopod because it's symmetrical. Beautiful, beautiful fossil. And then here's some um, just bivalves of different sorts. So these were kind of cool because um, I found them in the same formation. And you can see these little like bumps Fossiling is totally a word. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, but yeah, these little bumps and ridges in some of the pieces that were embedded in the stone a bit differently, you could actually see that they were like sticking out like little like spikes and stuff. That's so cool. So um, yeah, do do a field guide to fossils too if you want to. That'd be really dope. Nice. Well, anyway, we're going to get you out of here. Unfortunately, I have no real muscles and uh, I do have a pocket guide. So we're going to go back to our pocket guide and... Um, I totally neglected to look at our comments here to see which features were the most common or the most important. So let's see, unlike its cousin, the black sand shell, the pond mussel is common in Kansas. Cool. It is found in decent numbers, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's talking about the life history. Okay. And it does say like other mussels in this group, the female is more inflated and is not nearly as pointed at the posterior end. Oh, okay, well, there you go. And it's uh, actually because it's providing space for the numerous maturing eggs in Glaucidia. Ooh, that's fun. Um, I'm not going to attempt to describe to you guys what Glaucidia is, but it's it's related to their reproduction. Um, you can Google that stuff. Actually, it's probably in this book, but we're getting real distracted here, so we're going to go back to journaling. I am totally going to write that in here, though, um, once I get it there, because it's really cool that the, the reason it's bulge is because it's allowing more room for the eggs and those kinds of features. Okay. Oh, we were actually looking for descriptions. Okay. So the most defining character of the shell is the noticeable fine ridges called sculpturing on the umbo. Oh dear. That are drawn up in the center appearing as inverted V's. Oh dear. 
Well, first of all, what on earth is an umbo? I'm going to have to go refer to the beginning of a book, which I think has a diagram of the parts of a muscle. Oh, the umbo is the hinge. It's the feature of the hinge on the top shell that I was calling just the hinge. The fancy word for this feature on the um, posterior, the top, the ventral shell, is the umbo. Ooh, fun word. Okay, so umbo. Cool, so if we go back to our pond muscle, let's see. Um, the umbo has fine ridges that are drawn up in the center, appearing as inverted Vs. What? Let me look real closely. Man, I cannot see that on these pictures in particular. But that sounds like a really, really important feature. So I am... This is hilarious. Hey, shush. <laughs> So I am going to uh, write that description in my journal because I don't know how to... Well, you know what? I have an iPad here. I can use my iPad to Google it real quick. This is terrible. I'm taking time out of my wonderful journaling time to uh, Google Pond Muscle Umbo. <laughs> to get, I wish I put a picture of it so I know what it looks like so I don't lead you guys astray over here. And this is what I would do if I were trying to journal these things out in the in the wild, whatever, you know what I mean, too, is that, you know, trying to look at these features that are pretty important. You know, man, I can't tell what this is talking about. Man, it just all kind of looks like lines to me. Drawn up into inverted Vs. Yeah, I don't see that at all in this shell, so I have no idea what it's talking about. Um, oh, jeez. Inverted V's. Well, you know, we're just gonna do my best. Oh, uh, Doug says he found a. Cr oh dear, I've just done something bad. Okay, I've found a creek that cut through the limestone beds and exposed the shells. Midway through the field sketching, I heard the click click of a lever action. Oh dear, <laughs> a lever action rifle. Um, young and dumb and didn't pay attention to the fact that it was private land. Oh no, yeah, please don't trespass in your journaling or your fossil collecting. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So yeah, you ask permission. <laughs> There's a lot of fun public lands too, and you know, um, uh, shoot, what was I gonna say? Uh, the the roadsides and stuff is a great place to go collecting fossils. I don't see a single indication of this V that they're talking about on the umbo, so I don't know what my problem is. Maybe if I were able to see it in person, it would be different, but we're just gonna do our best. Okay, we're gonna just draw it. Um, Back to actually journaling. Thanks for all of the um, um, diversions there. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, my goodness. This is like the most fun part about journaling is that, see, okay, if I if I just looked at a muscle shell, I'd be like, wow, um, sure is a muscle shell. But by taking the time to really get to know the organism and to try to document it in a proper way, it's like... Um, Oh, wait a second. Maybe. Okay, I don't know if y'all can see this. Um, but do you see how blah, 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 on this shell it's got like this like weird little like dip in here? Maybe that's what it's talking about cuz the umbo is up here. Maybe it's like as it goes up toward the umbo it has this little inverted V. I don't think that's what it's talking about. But I'm going to make sure I draw that on my journal anyway. <laughs> um so it kind of goes down and uh, you know what's kind of fun is that these ridges, unlike some of the other ridges we've been seeing, really have like the stripe effect. So they really have like a different texture as they go around the shell. And like the others, um, it kind of tucks in under over here. Boo, 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 boo. And it said that um, the bulging posterior is common in females of this group. So I honestly don't know which group of muscles this one would belong to because I am not at all familiar with muscle taxonomy, but that would be an interesting thing, I think, um, to add to this journal and maybe a question that I will write in here. Um, I'll just write a note that says taxonomy, question mark in the corner, because um, I think taxonomy is pretty important because it does like help you figure out like what these different organisms have in common and... Um, and that can help you really narrow down when you're looking at these guys. Yeah, seriously, Lindsay, where is Charlie Cope? Charlie Cope is 
currently undergoing a stay-at-home order because he is a state biologist. Sad face. I wish. Okay, so anyway, here is, boom, 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 our muscle shell. And I'm just going to loosely sketch in these striations or um, plications, maybe, <laughs> as our word up there said. Um, so here we go, boom. We're going to make sure we get all these little dudes in here. Um, and then what I'm maybe going to do is, because this one is so, like, stripey and the colors are so different, I might pay a little bit more attention to, like, when I come back to this illustration, sketching in what those different colors look like since they're not uniform at all. And I might like, you know, use my little markers or something to do that. Or if I can dig up some colored pencils, that'd be kind of cool. All right, cool. Anyway, that's our last one for that side. So let's do our pink paper shell. Um, boom, there it is. This one's round. I like it. Okay, so like before, I'm gonna read this first to see what is important externally, which is what I care about, thank you book. The pink paper shell is flattened, flattened, okay, cool. Oh wait, oh, I wanted to make sure I wrote um, the female, okay, I'm going back to this guy over here because I wanted to make sure I want, wrote down that the females flattened, wait, that will just pick something. Female uh, is bulged at posterior to make room for eggs. And glochidia. Which again, I'm not gonna go into today, but I would encourage you guys, please go look up the glochidia stuff because it's really cool. Mussels basically rely on fish to reproduce and uh, they, they will use different lures to draw fish in toward them and then basically squirt the eggs out or, or the glochidia. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with their reproductive cycle. Um, anyway, so they, they squirt something into the fish's gills, which then um, develops into young mussels. So, yeah, very fun. Okay, here's our dude. Flattened with a dorsal wing. Ooh, okay, that... Uh, becomes jagged with age. Oh, that's fun. So I'm going to go ahead and make a note in here that the jagged wings equal older. That's a little fun tidbit. Neat. Okay. So, uh, let's see. This is super common too. That's neat. Um, all right. Shell color is chestnut brown and has a shiny luster. That sounds important. Um, as the name implies, the shell is very thin. Okay, paper shell. Oh, that's why it's paper shell. It's very thin, which is really different from the pond muscle. Remember, that was thick. So we're going to write uh, thick with two Cs because I'm extra like that. And uh, this one is going to be thin shelled. And let's see. The pink paper shell is most common in still water, and that's okay. So let's see. And it differs from the other paper shell that was on a different page by having a more rounded ventral surface. So the belly is rounder and a darker shell color. Okay, cool. Oh dear, I just knocked that over just about. Okay, another thing that was really cool here is that it says um, the shells from dead specimens may crack as they dry. Um, so, uh, I'm going to add that in here too, um, may crack as it dries. Cause that's kind of cool. And I imagine if we're seeing these guys, it's probably like, I mean, us as in the general population and not cool people who do like stream team or whatever. Um, it, it's going to be like out on a riverbank or something dried out. So let's see, here we go. Um, I'm actually going to start this one a little different because you see um, on this picture how it's like this little mini muscle up in here, but then these other edges kind of come out of that. So I'm going to try to capture that. And maybe that's what it was talking about by the, the dorsal wings. Um, so let's, let's sketch in the little mini muscle shape. Uh, oh, I broke my pencil again. Oh no. Yeah, I bet that's what it's talking about with the wings. 
Now, see, I don't know if I would have noticed that if I hadn't sat down and attempted to draw it. It also might have been easier to notice if I were holding the shell in hand, but um, since I'm not doing that, and often when we're trying to learn new organisms, um, you know, some, some of us are trying to learn it ahead of time when we're not like out in the field actually looking at the specimen. We're trying to study ahead of time so we know what to expect. And so um, I, I love journaling for that reason as well. Okay, there we go. There's that side. And then here is this side. Oh, and look, it's actually kind of jagged on the edge. So maybe this is a little bit of an older muscle like the guide was telling us. Cool, so that's fun. We're gonna go ahead and sketch in whoop, this little dude. And it didn't mention anything about dimorphism. So I'm guessing that the males and females look pretty similar in this species. And it, remember it said that the shininess of the shell was an important feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like block out this shine on the shell. This muscle is shiny. I'm really sorry. It's been a weird uh, isolation. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so there's there's our little like jagged edge on our wing. Wow, good job. Okay, there we go. Boom. And then it kind of goes in like this, and then it kind of wraps around and gets pretty wide. And this is a really kind of like smoothed out, like round edge on this side over here. Whoop. Okay, so there's my basic shape. Boom, done. Um, now, in order to kind of get, well, let's see here. This is why I shouldn't use pencils, because I just want to erase it and make it better. That's okay. Only one erase per session, per muscle. That's my new rule. Okay. Um, it is a little bit more, like, I guess, triangular? I don't know. Was that any different from the last one? Absolutely not, but that's okay. There we go. I want to make sure I get this little ridge in here. This ridge this ridge, this ridge, this ridge. Cool. So I believe that these are the wings. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, identify those on my drawing. And this is the top of the shell. So boom, that's great. And then to kind of make sure I get the 3D features of this shell, I'm going to make sure I get these, um, let's see, and this, I guess, shine needs to be rounded off too. Get these little striations, these plications, these, what was the other word for them? I didn't write any other words. Ridges, <laughs> sure. No, 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 that's this one. Okay, never mind. Um, striations. This muscle is shiny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cool. Um, and then it kind of comes like and makes an abrupt turn over here, I guess. I don't, this is a, a little bit harder to draw. That's so interesting because um, just looking at this image, it seems like it's a much more simple shape to draw than some of the other ones we've done. And yet for me, I am finding that this one is like a little bit more challenging to capture. And I think it's because it's just got these like, it's very three dimensional. And it's really hard to catch that in um, a drawing. I guess I didn't really capture either the fact that like these these striations really come out and like bulge out over on this side. So let's see if I can't attempt to correct that in my sketches. Okay, well, I guess that'll have to work. Um, and it's called a pink paper shell, I guess, because on the inside it's pale pink. So I'm going to go ahead and write that on here. I'm not going to go ahead and probably sketch out the insides of the muscles today just because I honestly have no idea what time it is or how much time we have left. <laughs> well, what time is it? Oh gosh, it's already been 45 minutes. Well, yeah, so I'm not gonna sketch that right now, but since there is a lot of like extra space on this page, that would be kind of a cool thing to go back and do at a later time if you wanted to um, fill in more details. Cool, okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, I think what I'm going to do next in order to make these shapes a bit easier to see is I actually wanna grab a pen, I think and um, get the outside edges and maybe some of the important features and like outline them, I guess, to make it a little easier to see what's going on, just for my sake. Um, and then maybe try to do a little bit more shading. I just wanna make sure that when I like do a bit more shading of these features, I don't lose the most important things. 
So I'm going to come in here and uh, just make this outline. Well, this is a little thin, but that's okay. I, I'm actually going to grab a thicker pen. Cool. So let's see. Nice. This is a little 0.7 one. I love these um, Stettler pigment liners. Mostly because they're waterproof. So that means I can, if I want to, go back and watercolor these. Um, I think that'd be really fun, honestly. Maybe we should do a watercolor session at one time. I went to a conference where, with um, fellow uh, interpreters where they did sessions just on watercoloring and how to do that. My bad, guys. I accidentally clicked a notification instead of dismissing it. Um, so, yeah, there we go. There's that. Beautiful. Let's get this little guy and his wings. Um, because watercolors are a really fun thing to take out in the field because you really don't need like every single color ever. Um, and you can get real cheap ones and they're really portable and you know, you can get those, uh, brushes that you fill with water. So you don't even really need to bring like a bucket of water or anything out with you. And unlike colored pencils, you know, if you've got your main three colors or whatever that you're using, then you can mix them and create whatever extra colors you need and it's, it's a pretty fun exercise to do so i'm going to go ahead and outline this little tiny one too just a little bit maybe with some like unfinished edges here just to kind of show that it's not like a solid line but it's definitely distinct from the rest of them cool and hey jen welcome i'm also going to let's see i'm gonna make sure i get this um, bow. Jen Raider, hang on, I have a question for you. Um, we were looking at the pond muscle, and it says that one of the dis distinguishing features is that the, the umbo has these, like, striations that kind of make an inverted V or something. Could not find it, and I'm wondering if it's this little piece right here, because there wasn't really anything up in this section. I don't know. Anyway, if you happen to know, I would love to hear the answer. I tried to Google it and everything, just did not find it. Okay, so then this little dude, boom, boom, boom. I've got some really fun um, brush pens too. Like I think I used them on the beginning here, but then I, the ink takes a little bit of time to dry and not all of those are waterproof and I cannot remember which ones are waterproof. So we're using this one, but those are really fun because it kind of gives you this like varying size of the line, which kind of makes your drawing feel like it's coming to life a little bit more. And I quite like that personally. But I'm, I'm kind of a fan of like a more cartoony style for myself personally. I feel like it's a really clear way to communicate visually by making like big bold outlines and that kind of thing. Okay, so then here's this little dude. And I think kind of like how on this guy down here, I made some broken up edges. Um, I don't know if y'all can see my face getting down in there, but don't laugh at the weird expressions I'm making. Boom. And then this little little lady up here, we'll give her, her some little outlines. And then what that allows me to do too is maybe come in and um, I think this was like the where the hinge or the, where the shell actually met. So I'm gonna make this like much bolder. But yeah, there we go. Boom. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make some of these like more prominent edges like just like little dotted lines and I might just use a thinner pen just for fun to make that a little bit more clear what's going on here. And same thing up here. And fortunately we went ahead and we um, made some of these striations pretty easy to identify on the shell. Like we got the, the, um, the landmarks on them I guess. So there's our little dune. And I'm going to get the edges for sure on this one, but maybe not the rest. And then maybe these little, I, I'm trying to focus on the lines um, that maybe show like contours most. So like on the edges here where it's kind of like folding in and showing how 3D the shape is. Um, yeah, I'm trying to focus on those. Oh, thanks, Jen. I appreciate it. Well, you know, we'll all just have to kind of make this journey together and figure it out when we can. Isn't that like a mood though? Like all my books are at work too. I have a collection of them at home, but not not here with me today. 
Boom, 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 boom. We might go a little over 11 just for fun to get some of these things. But anyway, what, what kind of is nice about um, doing it this way too is that I can then, um, because I have these darker outlines, I can kind of erase these pencil marks and make them a little bit less prominent um, if I want to go ahead and maybe uh, do some colors on this. Um, what's really nice about these muscles as a group is that like the, the shapes are so simple that it makes it a lot, I don't know, easier to, to focus on on details actually now that we're here at, at the end and we're filling it all in because it's kind of like, um, I, I don't know, what, what am I trying to say here? It's, um, there's just like no, there's no limbs. There's, there's no weird like heads or other shapes. It's like a very, it's a very like simple organism, um, which makes it so much easier, I guess, to come in and dive into the things that make them different and the things that maybe like look really simple on the surface, but you know, upon further investigation, they're actually like, not simple at all. Um, yeah, so that's kind of fun. And they won't run away from you if you want to go outside and find some. Cool. Okay. Well, there's that. Um, I'm going to maybe make some of my notes here a bit better to look at or easier to look at. So this one is a thick shell. This one is a thin shell. And at this point, in order to fill out our field guide more, I think probably what I would be doing is trying to make some more comparisons, I guess, between these shells. Um, and man, the color is really the best way to do that in this particular group, but I mean, it doesn't have to be just the color. Let's see, what am I gonna do next? Um, maybe just kind of gently erase some of these lines. That's fun. Um, by the way, thank you guys for joining me. It's cool seeing so many people hanging out with me, journaling. Man, is it weird that like I really just kind of want to grab my watercolors and do a watercolor like filling it in real quick? This is definitely not watercolor paper, but I mean that doesn't matter. Hmm. Well, maybe. Um, I I think. Let's see. What do you guys want to see happen next? I guess is a good question. I'm gonna look at my book here to see if there's any important notes I missed. But like, really, um, would you guys? If, if this were your journal page or if you're looking at your own journal pages, like what would you want to do next? Um, color it in, maybe do some like easy shading to kind of get the forms of it or like what what do you want to see happen next? And I'll, I'll let you discuss while I look through my little notes here. Watercolors, of course, thanks. Um, <clears throat> well, poo. All right, let's do watercolors. I'll be right back, guys. I got to go find my watercolors. Good thing I'm broadcasting from home. Good morning, Grant. Right, here we go. Um, I have just reorganized all my stuff, so we're coming back in here and I got some watercolors. This is just like a super easy palette. 
I, I think I started off with like just eight colors or something. And this is the one I don't take out in the field with me. The one I take out in the field has like um, a, just a, a small number of colors on it. And I've got this uh, water pen here, which, oops, I just about unscrewed and dropped all the water everywhere. But um, it's really nice. You just like take a cloth or something. I use old rags and socks and stuff. And you just clean the brush off by like, you know, when you squeeze it, water comes out and boom, easy. Um, and I've got my little spray bottle, so I'll just wet my palette real quick. These colors aren't going to be like crazy because they're muscles, but that makes it so much better for just like doing a quick little watercolor. So let's see. Um, consulting my book again. Let's start with the three ridge because um, that way my hand isn't going to be sitting on wet paper. Ooh, okay. So it's this really like kind of fun uh, little grayish color. I mean, there's, it's really a nondescript color, isn't it? Old gray beards is the name for them. Okay. <laughs> That's really cute, actually. I'm going to write that down in my journal. <laughs> I love it when they just have like dumb, cute little names like that. Old gray beard. That's like freaking Gandalf the gray. Oh my word, it literally is. Okay, well, in that case, sorry, we're getting a little sidetracked here. We're gonna make this one a Gandalf the Grey. Boop, boop, boop. Boom, it's a wizard. <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I wanna get like just like some plain gray colors. So uh, let me clean off this palette, that's real messy. Not that it matters a whole lot when I'm doing really like dull colors in the first place, but get out of here, iPad. You're making me get in the way. Okay. Um, but let's see. It's just like a pretty plain gray color. Let's put this guy on here for you guys. And um, man, I don't even know how to describe that. It's almost like a little bit pinkish, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I've got a fun like little purpley gray here. So maybe I'll do that. Um, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and first just kind of fill in the whole thing. Boom, 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 boom. Hopefully my, um, what's it called? My ink, my Stetler pigment liner has dried completely or this is going to get real weird. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. Ooh, that's kind of fun. My, my pencils are bleeding into the ink a little bit or the, the watercolor cool so then I'm gonna just kind of drop in um, some colors and the fun thing about watercolors is that like they really do all the work for you I think that's why I like using them so much they they just like I don't know they don't do a whole need a whole lot of uh, attention you just kind of drop colors in and then they just do their own thing so this is all wet so I'm just gonna kind of outline like where these ridges are and make that a little bit darker and it would be a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about if it were um, actual watercolor paper, but it's fine. We just work with what we've got here today, and that's okay. So we're going to make this a little darker too, so we can really see those ridges. Fun, fun, fun. And then maybe come in here, swing around, and do some like striations that go all the way around like in this image. I'll just kind of drag some of these colors out a little bit. This isn't going to be the most pretty thing ever, but that's, again, not the point of journaling. The point of journaling is to, like, try to document things and to make observations visually or with words or, you know, whatever. Cool. So we'll add in more ridges like this. Just to kind of get, like, a sense of what's happening on this little dude. I guess this needs to be kind of a ridge as well, isn't it? Cool, and watercolors always dry a little bit um, lighter than they look when they're wet. So keep that in mind and you can always go back and add more on top of it. That's why it's kind of fun. You just uh, keep adding colors until it looks right-ish. Now it does look a little bit pink on my little palette here because I, had um, that 
what's it called? Golly, I can't words anymore. Um, I don't know. That's fine. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. I mean, I guess that kind of captures it good enough. You've got all the different ridges. There's some fine ridges that continue to go over these little warty dudes, too. Not warts, um, ridges, I guess. It's a three ridge. <laughs> Cool. So I'm going to call that good enough for now. Um, I might come back a little bit later when it's dry and add a little bit more darkness on it. But boom, beautiful old gray beard. Yellow sand shell, that'll be fun. Okay, for this one, I am going to squeeze my brush here and get water all over my shell. Oh dear, the red is going to make it look kind of weird. I probably should have used blue, but then I would have the same problem. So it's fine. Um... We'll just have to understand when we look back at our journal that the red is like an underpainting and not necessarily true to life. So filling this all with water so that I can kind of drop in the yellow colors. Boom, boom, boom. I just happen to have yellow all over my palette because I paint with yellow a lot. Um, so boom, there we go. I'm just going to fill it all in. And since I covered it in water first, the colors are going to all bleed together a bit better. So that's nice and it's definitely darker toward the edge of this shell and lighter in the middle so what's kind of fun about this is that it really allows us to focus on the pieces that we notice the most um, so again like it's not necessarily about accuracy I'm lifting up some color off of the parts that I think should be lighter is what I'm doing right now which might tear up my page a little bit but that's okay just because of the paper I'm using. Um, but yeah, it focuses, it allows you to zero in on the features that you think are more important. So we've got the yellows in, boom, easy. Um, and these ridges around it look kind of brown. So I'm gonna jump in here and just grab some sepia because that's easy. So just, you know, kind of a pre-mixed color here that's already on my palette. Added in a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to come in and add that. And I'm doing it while it's wet because I kind of want it to bleed through a lot. Um, I think that that would be an accurate <laughs> thing to happen. And I like how this little ridge on the top here goes like straight across almost. Like you can really tell that it's like a little different. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit lighter than it was before by just like basically ran my brush all over the palette to get the paint off of it. So then we've got some of that and some more striations coming around like that. And maybe what we'll do is the same thing over here. Boom, boom, boom. See, watercolor is super easy. You just have to let it do the work for you, basically, because it will if you let it. And it takes a little bit of getting to know watercolors to figure out like what exactly they do, but um, just because they're so different from you know paint that you can use to cover up all your mistakes and <laughs> acrylics basically and that and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's really it's really fun, and maybe it's the same sort of quality that I like about um, pens instead of pencils because it's like if I can't cover up whatever I did because you know it's transparent then it's a little bit easier for me to just kind of let whatever happens happen and not really focus in on too much on, you know, if I did it right or if I need to correct it or paint over it again or something like that. Cool. So I'm going to call that good. That's our little yellow dude. I might add like a couple little yellowy striations over here just to get that yellow colors in. Because now that I'm noticing it's drying, um, it really is becoming much more like pale. And I do want it to like be noticeably yellow in a few places so that you can really, well, that was a little too yellow. <laughs> That's okay. Nothing, a little watercolor magic can't fix. Boom, 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 boom. Easy. Okay. Cool. So there's our little paper shell dude. Or, wait, sand shell. shell blah, 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 whatever. Um, next, we've got our other friends over here. Um... So let's see, pond, oh, the pond mussel was the weird one, right? This is going to be difficult. Um, what time is it? Okay, it's just after 11. I do have like 
other work I'm supposed to do today. So um, I'm not gonna go too much longer beyond this, but we'll try to get the other muscles colored in. So my pond muscle, um, very dark lines with some really pale lines in the middle, shiny. Um, I kind of, if I'm in a cheaty mood, which I am today and in, in journaling, I'm always in a cheating mood, but um, I've got a white gel pen so I can go back and add shines and not really care too much while I'm painting about leaving things quite. Um, sure. I'm gonna take this tan color and just fill this whole thing in tan and then put the darker colors on top of it. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. And I'm actually just using the same tan that was already on my palette from doing our little banana boat dude. Did I not even write banana boat on that journal entry? That is a disgrace, honestly. I should have done that. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna have to let that dry, so there you go. Um, I'm gonna let that dry and then come back and do a dark layer in a second. So much easier to do it with a paintbrush than to try and do it with a pen. And that leaves us with our paint pink paper shell. Ooh, which has some fun colors. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna start with like a grayish purpley dude, I guess. Um, I had a watercolor teacher one time who told me that if your space you're trying to fill with color, hi Cody! If your face you're trying space you're trying to fill with color is like bigger than a walnut, then like cover it in water first. Um, but I'm not trying to do like a fancy painting today, so we're just gonna do whatever we want. So here we go. I'm gonna color it in purplish. Boom, 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 boom. And then what I'll do is I'll come back in and make certain areas a little bit lighter, I guess. Notice how I'm getting like less conservative the longer I go on. Like that first one I was like, oh, we better not make it too dark. And now I'm like, ah, whatever. I'll just color it all in. Hi, Cody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That sure is a muscle. Okay, so we got our muscle dude in. He's looking real pretty. He or she, I guess we don't know the sex on this one. Um... Boom, 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 boom. And to make it a little bit lighter in some places, I'm gonna add water and then like blot it out with my little towel just to kind of like lift it up a bit. Some some watercolors are better or worse at this, so you'll have to practice with your own watercolors to see like, how do they lift off? Are they gonna even come off at all? Do they totally stain your paper? And you'll, you'll figure it out as you go. But yeah, okay, there we go. That's, I'm happy with that. Did I totally get watercolor all over everything? Yes, but it's fine. Um, Okay, I'm happy with that. Is this dry yet? Nope. You can tell if watercolors are dry because if you touch them with like the back of your hand, they'll still be cold to the touch. So even though this kind of looks like it's dry, it's definitely not. Um, this one is dry though. This is dry. So I can come back and do some stuff with this one. Um, I think we're done with that guy for now. So um, before this gets too dry though, um, see how there's some tan colors? up in the center. I want to get that in there. So we're going to take our same tan we've been using this whole time and just, oh, well, that was maybe not the right mistake. That was a mistake. That's fine. It's fine. You know what? It doesn't matter. We're just doing this to learn about things and we sure are learning about things. So here we go. Maybe a bit more sepia and a bit less of that other color. And my paper is starting to come apart a little bit just because this is not watercolor paper. So that just means you have to, you know, make sure you're not overworking it and putting down like too much stuff because then your paper is going to be like, <laughs> excuse me, and uh, just come apart at the seams. Cool. So, you know, that, that'll that work. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I think we got the tan colors and the like gray colors. Oh, thanks, Cody. I am not a GPNC Bob Ross, but I am absolutely uh, just tickled that you would say something like that. <laughs> Is this dry? No. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry and then you see how um, there's like a bunch of lighter ridges and then like our, what's this called, shine on the shell. I'll come back when this is dry and add some white gel pen just to make that stuff stand out. Um, I've seen some journalers like in the National Nature Journal Club 
group on Facebook that will um, use colored paper in the first place too, which is a really fun challenge as well. And uh, then you can really make use of tools like this to, to highlight things and color things white. It's kind of fun. Okay, let's go back to Three Ridge and see if we're happy with him. Where is it? I put marks on them, Rachel. Okay. I want to make this whole thing a little bit darker because we're not really seeing the whole gray beard thing on this guy. We're just kind of seeing like um, whitish beard, I guess. That's like grayish. So I'm going to come back and this is a little bit less purpley than this one was, our little pink paper shell. So I guess I'll try to take like our purpley color that we used and let's see, what's the opposite of purple? That'll make it more gray. Yellow is the opposite of purple. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that. And now it's a little bit too tan, so I'm going to go back and add more purple. And you can just find like a real easy um, tool for um, color wheels, I guess, online to like look up that kind of stuff if you're not super familiar with painting and art. Uh, let's go ahead and fill this whole thing in. And hopefully what should happen is, since it's a transparent medium, by coming in and adding color on top of this, it'll still be darker in the places that are currently dark, if that makes sense. Um, because, you know, it's it's already got that darker layer under there and we're just adding something transparent on top. And we might lose a little bit of that definition because of this paper not soaking up the color as easily as actual watercolor paper. But that's okay, because we can just come back and fix it later. But there we go. I'm way happier with that. That looks way more gray and gray beard-ish than the other one. Um, it maybe turned out a little bit yellow, but you know what? It's okay. I'm happy with it. Cool. Okay. I'm happy with that guy. Again, we'll come back with our white gel pen in a second and totally fix it. But let's check on this guy and see if he's dry. Ooh, almost. It's so, so close. If you're sketching outside, what's really nice is that it's really easy to, um, come back and, uh, what am I saying? It, it dries out really quick because it's outdoors. Inside, if I'm like in a hurry, I'll use a blow dryer, but it's fine. Okay, actually that feels really good now. Cool, so let's just go back to our pond muscle, finish him up, and then be done with our nature journaling for the day. So there's this guy, it actually looks really purple again. I'm a fan of using purple as a dark color anyway because it's just a really, really beautiful dark color in general, I guess, but anyway, we're gonna come in and Let's see, I guess I'll lay him down on the paper. Can we see that still on the... No, no, we can't really. I'll put it there. How's that? Then y'all can see it. I don't want to get my little book wet. Cool. So I'm kind of using this one as my reference point. This whole band here is dark. I have like more pure paint to make it real dark. Yeah, that's the stuff. Fun. Okay, that looks really good. Um, compared to the drawing, I'm pretty happy. Boom, there's that. And then we'll just add some other striations. I need more water here. Cool. I'm trying to find whatever features are like the most prominent first and make sure I get that in there. Okay, um, so this one kind of comes out and it kind of fades. It's really pale toward the bottom. So I think that makes it easier to paint here to see like leave like little tiny bits of white. Does that make sense? At any rate, that's why I'm choosing to do this in the order that I'm doing it. And let's see, it gets like randomly dark right here. So we'll just add some little like dark colors on this side. And then making sure that we get our little change of contour. And there's actually, okay, there's also actually some like little stripes that kind of go down like this, which is really interesting. So we'll try to get that in there a bit. Um, bigger one right there. And I guess, you know, this is kind of a general sort of thing. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, with that in mind, I might just go ahead and like roughly make some of my other markings on here. Oh gosh, what have I done? Nothing, it's fine. Okay. Um, 
Cool. And then some real dark lines on this side right here I've missed. And then I need some more purple. This is going to end up drying really light because I used a little too much water on it. But that's okay. I'm just going to come in and get some purple and drag it across to make it fortified, I guess. <laughs> Um, and honestly, this is still way too light. I need to add a little bit more paint uh, in a liberal fashion. So we'll just come in here and really paint this sucker up at the bottom here. Make the edge dark. Keep a little light edge there and then really just paint them in. Okay. Is this perfect? No. Is it a journal entry which kind of to me clearly outlines the features that I think are the most important or that I notice the most. Yeah, sure. And that's really the point of a journal entry. Um, not to be like super accurate, but just to capture the things that you're noticing. I think that's one powerful tool that illustration has over something like photography is that um, you're, you're kind of editing what you're seeing. You know what I mean? So like in, in scientific illustrations, for example, you have an opportunity to make really important features that maybe don't stand out quite as much just looking at it with the naked eye. You really have a chance to make them more visible and more clear by the way that you illustrate it. Um, and so if you keep that in mind and you think less about like, am I perfectly recreating this? and instead challenge yourself to capture the most important details of it, I think that you're doing journaling in a successful way for you and for your learning. Let's make this a little bit like less dark. Cool, okay, so if I was like gonna keep going for a long time, probably what I would do is you notice that it's a little bit like blurred out in some places and the light maybe not quite as late as I have it in my painting here. Um, but I'm gonna leave that as good enough for now and if I were to come back to it, I might like say right here in this region, just come through and make it all generally a little bit darker just to capture that form. Um, but I'm not too worried about that right now because I think it got the most important things, which was like those light and dark stripes that are really, really different now, especially in contrast with the other muscles on our page. Like it really stands out as being something quite different from the others. Neat. Okay, well that was fun. Um, let's wrap this up. I, again, no idea what time it is. Um, so we'll we'll just get this done and then be happy. But um, <clears throat> we're gonna. That's wet. That's not. That's not. So um, it's a little bit, but it'll be good enough for our gel pen to add some like other markings in here and and sort of a fun thing too is that now that we have the colors down you could also go back in with your ink pens and make some of these shapes a little bit more obvious but for now I'm just gonna come in here and you can see the shine on the shell is like really kind of jaggedy with the striations of the actual muscle so we're gonna try and capture that and just come back in here and uh, make some fun little markings and it's not working quite as well as normal because it is a little bit wet up there in the center in particular, but it's okay. We're capturing the most important stuff. Boom. I've seen some people who um, use watercolors use gouache too. That's like um, the opaque sort of watercolor. It's spelled G-O-U-A-C-H-E. So I think some people will, will mispronounce it as gaucho or something, but it's gouache. Um, add some little contours in here. Oh, there's a fun little light ridge down here, so we'll try to get that in there and get one in here too. Fun, okay. Um, and gouache is kind of fun because you can paint and it kind of looks the same, but it's, it's more like your watercolors have uh, a little bit of an opacity to them. I don't have gouache on my palette yet, but I have been seriously considering it. I'm just worried that if I do that, it'll like make me take too much time when I'm journaling. But maybe just for doing other art, that would be fun. Cool, so there's some highlights on that little dude. Um, I'm gonna kind of clean off my gel pen there a bit. Cool, neat, Um, let's do that's not dry. Let's see if our yellow sand shell has any highlights we can put on it. Not really, but we'll, we'll go ahead and just for fun, add a couple of little lines on here just for some details. 
they're not going to stand out a whole lot, but you know, it adds like a little bit of texture just to kind of come back in and be like, these parts are really light because they are reflecting little bits of light. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm happy. Well, these guys are not dry yet. Dry, 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 dry. <laughs> Maybe while we're waiting for that to dry, I will color in my little Gandalf the Grey. Um, I'm hoping that you guys, while you're, excuse me, journaling along with me here. Where did my other, oh, there it is. I hope that you are thinking about ways you can take some of these concepts and apply them to journaling in your own backyard or with your own field guides or whatever. And I'm going to add a little speech bubble just for funsies. <laughs> Old gray beard. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that'll be... Maybe good enough. Ironically, this one is drying out faster than the top one. Old gray beard. You need to dry faster. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, let's go back to our friend. Um, the pond muscle. Where? Which tab is my pond muscle under? There it is. Hey, okay. So, um, just like a few little highlights. I want to put some highlights right on this side of the shell. Um, and the white gel pen thing isn't totally perfect because it is a little bit, like, transparent. But it still gets the idea across. And that is what matters. Fun. It's got some like little flecks up here, but I think that's just because like it's chipped off in certain places. But at the same time, I want to add those details because I think it'll really help make this muscle come alive. Um, I'm just kind of randomly throwing little bits on there. And let's see. Let's make um this little highlight stand out a bit more. And as we keep going, I'm going to come back and add more highlights just to make the, the white a little bit more clean. I know some people who use just straight up white out for their art like this. Apparently that's really big in the tattoo world. I learned from my friend who is working on an apprenticeship. Um, boom. Beautiful. That'll work. Okay, let's get our old gray beard and just work with him even though he's totally still wet. Um, because I think this one has, like, the most notable little, uh, this one. Yay, colored pencils! I'm so glad, Anna, that you're able to journal along. Colored pencils are fun, too. I just, um, find it a little bit more time-consuming, I guess. But if you, I mean, there's nice colored pencils out there that, like, blend really, really well, almost like paints. And those are just crazy cool to me. Um... Oh, this is, these are fun. So it's almost like the little ridges go all the way up. I didn't even notice this until I started adding the white, but it kind of looks like um, the, the ridges that begin down here, they continue up here by rubbing off the outer shell color on the top of the ridge. So I'm going to make sure I am attempting to show that by adding these highlights. Oh, that's really fun. Neat. Okay, so this ridge here, same thing. Oh, it's like the top of this little ridge. Um, it's like worn off a little bit. That's fun. And that's really helping, I think, to solidify our ridge shapes too, because I tried to put some shadows in there, but until you come in and you add some of these little highlights, it doesn't necessarily come across as like a super clear subject. But like having to add these highlights in really helps your eye go, oh, okay, that's the top of the ridge. And the shadows are like the bottom of the ridge. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so this is really coming together now, guys. I'm really excited about this. I love our little gray beard, dude. He's cute. Fun, fun, fun. Okie dokie. Let's see what else I can do. Oh, this ridge comes up and keeps going a little bit. So we'll make sure we get that in there. And we're almost done, guys, so bear with me, and uh, we'll wrap up this drawing, and then I think we're going to be happy and satisfied with our muscles for now. Um, and this is kind of cool. Like, I've, it's it's really fun as a naturalist, like somebody who, like, already kind of knows 
a, a lot about certain groups of organisms to find my blind spots and the things that I really don't know much about and to kind of challenge myself to fill in those gaps by learning new things. I, I think that's one of my favorite things about my job working at the nature center and being an interpreter of these natural things is that I'm always in these positions where I get to learn new stuff and like honestly there's not a lot out there that's better than getting to learn new things about the world around us and what better way to learn than to document it in your own little field guide that you're creating in your sketchbook so this is this is a fun fun activity and I'm so glad that so many of you are apparently enjoying <laughs> coming on this journey with me and getting to journal with me because it's a fun thing to do and it's often hard to get up like on a Saturday morning in person too and come out to the the journal club that we have so you know hopefully this will be a cool a cool way for us to reach people at home and maybe when our uh, isolation period is over I'll see some of you guys who are in Wichita um, at the Nature Center with me to journal in person and you can look at some muscle shells up close in person and go outside with us which is you know peak nature journaling goals obviously well that I think is gonna wrap this up um, if it were me continuing and going indefinitely all freaking day I would probably come back in and add a lot more dark striations with my pen now that I have the colors in there I'm just gonna add a little bit while I'm doing a little talking with you guys now just for fun but um I'm gonna call that good I guess for now and I'm I'm pretty pleased with like how much we learned today together and um like it's I don't know this is just I love I love this kind of stuff guys and I hope that it's helping you feel connected to the outdoors while you're stuck inside too and you know friendly reminder if you are going outside and you are uh, enjoying some exercise and stuff like that please be conscientious of other walkers um, I know sometimes our trails in particular can be a little bit narrow I mean they're not really intended for bikes on the interior parts of the path and stuff like that so you know just use caution um, stay safe wash your hands you filthy animals <laughs> and uh, make sure you journal whether it's with your house plant or sitting on your deck looking at your yard checking out the birds at your feeder, document things, journal things, and uh, just, just have some fun connecting with nature. So that's it. All right, well, and that, with that completed, uh, I'm going to, I guess, sign off. Oh, yay. You uh, should come do some watercoloring classes. Yeah, that'd be really fun. Actually, um, maybe we could just have, like, a whole watercolor practice session or something. Um, I've... Got some notes from one of those NAI conferences I've been to on that, so that that could be fun. Anyway, all right, guys. See you later. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me. Um, that's it. Bye-bye.